So today we're going to tackle this. This is kind of like one of those Chinese knockoffs of a uh, dust deputy. I bought it probably two years ago just to see how well it compares. The only problem is I didn't buy an actual dust deputy to compare it against. So we're just going to go ahead and install it. I got this little I don't know what it is. It looks like a 20 gallon maybe fiber drum. And um, I like these fiber drums because they have kind of the rigidity of a steel drum but the, the weight of a plastic drum. If you try to use a little plastic drum or even like a bucket, the suction of the vacuum could collapse the sides. But that won't happen here. So anyway, I already uh, installed a hose onto this end, uh, I guess this would be like the suction line, I don't know what you would call it, the inlet, there you go, the inlet of the cyclone. And then I guess you would call this maybe the exhaust, or this is the part that goes to your, your dust collector, or what I'm going to use is this giant rigid shop vac. I'm still trying to decide on how I'm going to attach it, if I want to permanently attach a hose to this spot or if I want to make it removable. So once I figure that out, I'll get started in uh, putting this together. three inches. I bought this cheap hole saw set years ago and um, you know it didn't specify what it was for so the first time I tried it I, I tried it on a piece of metal just a thin piece of metal but you can see what it did to the teeth and a bunch of other stuff broke on it. It was cheap, so I wasn't uh, too disappointed. So now I have this sketchy setup here um, that I'm going to have to disassemble. It's kind of just a, an amalgamation of parts, you know, to make the whole saw work. So, wish me luck. This is made, this is set up for, you know, cutting four inch holes in walls for dryer vent piping and things like that. I think I'm going to have to... Nope. I thought I was going to have to take it to the vise, but... Here it is. It's a little... Like I said, it's a little rough. One of the locating pins is broken off. Definitely not going to cut center, but it'll have to do. It's just cutting a piece of plastic. It's 
cutting through this little plastic lid. Wish me luck. Nice and wobbly. So I'm gonna throw all of that hole saw kit away, I think. Next time I need a hole like that, I'll have to just get a new kit. But I did the job. So I already lost the gasket that's supposed to go around this, but I'm just gonna use some foam weather stripping. Probably line. <coughs> line this flange with the weather stripping before I attach everything but before I do that I have to transfer the the holes from this flange to this guy there I can't find my my awl but I got the next best thing here the pointy end of a compass We're going for precision here. Should be obvious by now. Alright. Oh, this thing's like trying to trying to wrangle an octopus. Okay, I'm going to drill these four holes. You guys don't need to see that, so I'll be right back when it's done. They're eight millimeter in case you're keeping track. Oh. What do you guys think? Let me zoom you out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Sorry, I said I zoomed you out, but I actually zoomed you in. I'm going to go ahead and install this and um, hook it up and give it a try.
I wonder what's going to break first. Let's take a look inside. Well, there's definitely sawdust in there. I should have probably shown you the empty container before, but regardless, I'm editing between this and that and everything else anyway, so if I were trying to be deceitful, I could easily do that. But what I'm going to do for my own peace of mind is I'm going to clean this out. I'm going to clean that out. And then I'm going to do the ultimate test here. You see all that sawdust in there? Maybe not. Hold on one sec. There you go. So my table saw is pretty full and I'm going to try to fill up this guy. Oh, I don't want to go all the way because if I go all the way then if I fill this up all the way then it will eventually go straight into there. So I'll go about halfway with this see how much dust passes through and gets into that. Okay so now you can see the inside of that is clean. The inside of my shop vac is clean. I've dusted off my filter. This is the main reason why I want to make this conversion is I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of cleaning that filter. Um, I don't mind so much having to empty that uh, container and, and really that drum is not much bigger than that container but the cleaning these guys is a pain in the butt so I'd like to just not have to do that if possible. I'm going to get everything together and then set it up and go for that and see if I can do something. Alright, there's not going to be a lot for you to see here, but I'm going to just start removing some of the uh, sawdust from my table saw. Okay, one thing I notice it builds up a lot more static, which is interesting, not really that big a deal. So just so you see, I took a big chunk out of that uh, load of sawdust that was inside the saw here. So let's go ahead and open her up and see how it looks. Now I did, I did uh, move pretty fast there. So it wouldn't surprise me if I ended up overloading the cyclone and then made the dust, um, you know, kind of bypass the cyclone and go straight into the shop vac, but we're going to find out right now.
So, as expected, uh, I did get some crossover, but I don't think that is really the fault of the cyclone. It just has to do with the size and the amount of material I was moving through it. Um, I'll do one more test, and this time I'll just do some light, um, some light, normal shop vac style work, you know, like all around my workbench and everything. And um, maybe we'll get a different result. Maybe not. Uh, but this was probably beyond what it's designed for. Still did a pretty good job, if you ask me. I have this volume. Versus that amount. So. And it looks like this amount is a lot of really coarse stuff, but maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to empty these out again. Try it again. Okay, this is test number two. General duty shop vac work, cleaning up. Um, let me give this a shot, and then we will check out the results. Well, I ended up going overboard a little bit again, but this was a more realistic situation, or a more common type situation, cleaning up around my miter saw. Um, and so it was also heavily uh, caked in sawdust, so I expect there's going to be some pass through I don't know if you heard or if you noticed, but I was picking up pretty decent sized chunks of offcuts, and I heard them going through the system. And here is what I pulled out of there. And I'll check that out. The only thing that made it was this piece of tape. That is impressive. And not unexpected, I guess, because. Um, this uh, cyclone is uh, pretty much the does the exact same thing that a dust deputy do, does, and I those things have been the dust deputies have been proven time after time to work. I specifically chose this design because it has this I think they call it a toroidal shape here, it's a little bit different than the uh, dust deputy design. The dust deputy has a flat top. And I thought that maybe this would increase efficiency just a little bit. And as you can see, uh, I'm pretty happy with the results. So let me wrap things up here. So I'm sure there's lots of videos about this exact product out on YouTube. I kind of, when I do my own reviews or if, if there's something that I want to try out for myself, I try to stay away from other people's content so I can come up with my own conclusions and do it my own way. So, anyway, uh, this is, I, I bought this for a little less than $20 a long time ago. I think I got it off of Wish, maybe. Maybe I got it off of Amazon, I'm not sure. But I do remember it took a long time to get here, so I'm, a, I'm guessing it's going to be, it came from Wish. Um, the, the Dust Deputy, made by Oneida, uh, at the time of filming this, runs about $55. So about, I don't know, just a little over, I guess it's a little more than two and a half times the price of this. And you can get 
what I would consider the same performance. Now, um, before you guys run to the comments and you know say that this is uh, ripping off patents or stealing somebody's design, you need to keep in mind that Cyclone technology has been around for forever, and uh, nobody uh, in the market today owns that technology or that patent. And so, um, you know, this company has as much of a right to make it as anybody else. What I wanted to check was just, were these cheaper versions, did they perform? Did they do a job? Did they work? And I can confidently say that, yes, this one does work. I'm not going to... I'm not going to link anything down in the description where you can buy it. If you really want one of these, you can find them yourself. Um, you know, I would encourage you to um, maybe check out some of the offerings that Oneida has. And I, my goal is actually to buy a Super Dust Deputy um, made by Oneida that I can use on my big dust collector. But for the time being, this will do well for sanding and cleaning up and all the little things that I need to do around the shop that doesn't require a big dust collector. So to sum up, seems to be built well, seems to work well. Um, I did make sure I bought one that made the uh, that has the toroidal whatever design at the top, and I also did pay attention to reviews because there are some models out there that are kind of not as well built. This one is pretty uh, pretty solid for what it is. It's definitely sturdier than the. Uh, than the plastic that it's attached to. Now I've seen, I have seen people attach these units to their dust, or not their dust collectors, but to their shop vacs and make it one giant rolling unit. And uh, I don't really see the benefit of that. I, I think keeping it modular um, and for my use is better because then if I need to take the shop vac into a room of the house or somewhere else, I don't have to disconnect it from the big apparatus and maybe there's a design where it just drops in and it's not fastened or anything. But for the time being, while I'm using this, I think I'll keep them separate. The hoses are long enough that, you know, they're, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, cramped for space or anything. And um, I think it'll work for me for now. Now, if I do feel like in the future I do want like an all-in-one unit, I'll build something. I'll make a video about it probably. But for the time being, I'm satisfied with keeping them separate. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give me a like and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. It really does help out. And go ahead and give me your opinion down below, even if you don't think that these are rip-offs or, or whatever your opinion is. I like, uh, I enjoy the conversation. So thanks everybody for watching. My name's Tom. I will see you next time.